Sub-issues allow you to break down and organize issues with an apparent-child hierarchy in GitHub. And today, they are available in an opt-in beta. Let's learn what sub-issues are, how you use them, and most importantly, how do you get in the beta? Here we go. Hey y'all, I'm Mickey Gousset, a staff DevOps architect on the GitHub Fast Track team. Before we dive into the topic of sub-issues, I wanted to ask that if you enjoy the content on this channel, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps the YouTube algorithm to get my content out in front of more people. So, what are sub-issues? Well, first, you need to know what an issue is. Issues are used to plan, discuss, and track your work. You know, the stuff you want to do. You can track issues using project boards, which I've done some in some previous videos. Well, you add a sub-issue to an issue to break down larger pieces of work into smaller pieces, aka tasks. Think of it like an epic being broken down into, say, user stories, or a user story being broken down into individual tasks. Your sub-issues show their relationship to the parent issue, allowing you to track your work across GitHub. Parent issues and sub-issues progress is also available in GitHub projects, which allows you to build views, filter, and group by the parent issue. And yes, your sub-issues can have sub-issues, allowing you to create hierarchies of issues to your heart's content using them to visualize entire projects or just pieces of your work and show the relationships between your issues. Now you can add up to 50 sub-issues to each parent issue and create a nesting of up to eight levels deep. Okay, that's enough of this talking head. Let's go look at a demo of using sub-issues and when we get back, I'll tell you how you can sign up for the beta. Okay. So here we are in my test repository. So the first thing we're going to do is go up to issues and we're going to create a new issue. So I need to create a feature issue with a couple of user stories and then some tasks under those user stories. So we're going to create my feature issue and we'll call it feature one. And we'll give it a description of feature one. And then we can create the issue. Now one of the things you're going to notice is you now have, if you're in the beta, you have this sub-issue drop-down list box, which, which you can then either create a new sub-issue or add an existing issue as a sub-issue. So let's create a new sub-issue and we'll just call this user story one user story one, we'll create it. And because notice how it adds it under this section called sub issues, there's user story. I've got zero of one completed. And up here you can see I've got zero of one of my sub issues completed. So let's add a second one. And we'll call this user story two, give it a description and create it. So now you can see that we have two issues, sub issues, user story one, user story two. Currently neither of them are completed. We can also see that right up here as well. Great. So now let's go add some tasks to the first user story. Now I could go back out to my features tab and then go, I mean, to my issues tab and then go to the user story. But instead, if I just click right here on the user story, it flies it out as a, as a window. Now I have the ability to come up here and view this issue in, you know, an entire tab in the web browser. But this is kind of nice because I can stay on my parent issue behind it while I work on the child issue. So here I want to add some subtasks or some 
subtasks, some tasks, which are also going to be sub issues to this user story. So I'm going to click create a sub issue. And because I know I'm going to add multiple tasks, I'm going to check this box right here to create more sub issues. So we'll call this task one or task one, task one, create it. We'll call this task two, task two and, cre and create it. And then finally, task three, task three, task three and create it. And now if we look at our user story, we can see that we have three tasks that are sub issues. Zero of three have been completed. We've got zero of three up here. You'll also notice that we have a link to our parent feature issue off of the sub issue user story. I can click that link to go to the parent. And I also over here under relationships, I can see that I have a parent issue relationship to this issue which is feature one, which again is also clickable. And I can see that that feature has obviously two sub issues under it and none of them have been completed. And if I click this, it takes me back to the parent. Okay, this is great. So, and now you can see under user story, I have my three subtasks as well. So I have the ability to, to see the whole hierarchy of sub issues and sub sub issues based off of which issue I am in. So let's go back up to our issues tab and let's create just a new issue here and we'll call it task four. And we'll say this is task four. We're just going to create that issue. And now what we're going to do is on our is go back to user story two. And on user story two, we're going to add an existing issue. And for the existing issue, we're going to go to task four that we just created and add it directly to the issue. So you can not only create new sub issues, you can also add existing issues as sub issues. And so now if we come back up to our feature, we can see our feature is broken down into these two user stories. And those two user stories are broken down into these different tasks. Now, if I'm, say I'm done with task two, I can open up task two and let's say I've completed it. So I'm going to close this issue. And by closing this issue, if we go back, you'll now notice that on the user story, one of three has been completed. The feature still shows zero of two because that's tracking the user stories themselves. But you can see we can track on the user stories when different things are completed. So we can come back here. We'll close this issue as well. And so we can have a view of where we are as far as getting stuff done. So let's take this one more step and look at how we might see this information at or in a project board. Let's go up to projects and let's create a new project board. And we'll call this the Mickey project board. Oh, that's, that's actually creating the surgery for a template, sorry. So we're gonna create it from scratch. We'll start with a table and we'll call this the Mickey project board. And we're gonna create this project. So here we are on our project board. So let's go create new items or add existing items. Let's add the existing issues from our repository. Let's select all of those items and click the add selected items button. Now that's going to add all of these issues to our project board. Right now we're not doing anything different than we would normally do when working with a project board. Now one thing we can do now though is we have a couple of new fields that we can add hidden fields one of which is the parent issue hidden field by adding the parent issue field we can see all of the parents of each of the issues and by adding in the sub issues progress 
field, we can see the progress across each of those issues. So that's kind of a nice little view here. We have the ability to see, to see you know, who has parents, um, the progress that's being made. We also have some filtering that we can do. So for example, maybe I only want to um, display sub issue or display sub issues for a particular parent, right? So I could come in here and I could filter by maybe has a parent issue. So I only want to display ones that have parent issues. So there you go. So now you can see feature isn't actually there. Or maybe I want to come in here and add a filter to where I want to filter just on, you know, user story one. And then it shows me all of the tasks on user story one. So you can see it says parent issue. It has the org name, the repository name, and then the issue number here. So I bet if I set this back to be eight, then it shows me filtering by feature in this case, because feature is issue eight. And it shows me the two user stories under the feature. So, and again, you can have multiple filter options. You could also filter by progress, right? So I could do a filter that shows, shows me um, ones that have progress, maybe ones that don't have progress. So I can maybe get a view of how things are going from that standpoint. Now, one of the things I really think is cool though, and let's save this view, is if I go create a new view, and we'll make it a table view, Actually, let me try that again. I'm going to delete this view. I'm going to create a new view, and I'm going to duplicate this current view so that it has all of these uh, different fields that I've already added. Now I can do something like maybe group by parent. And now I can see for each parent information around its children. So for the feature, here's the two user stories. For each user story, I can see the different tasks. I cannot, and I can also see, in this case, feature doesn't even have a parent issue. Now, wouldn't it be cool, though, if I had a way to easily see just a list of all the tasks or a list of all the user stories? I mean, I kind of can see it, you know, here, because under feature, I see the two user stories. Or under user stories, I can kind of see all the tasks. But wouldn't it be nice to easily see a view of just all the tasks? Well, there is also a new beta feature, which if you've signed up for this beta feature, gets you in to this other beta feature called issue types, where you're able to actually say an issue is a certain type, like a bug or a task. And I've got a video coming out shortly to show you that. There you have it, sub-issues. Right now, this feature is available in an opt-in public preview. To sign up, go to github.com slash features slash issues slash sign up and select the organization you want to add this feature to. Now remember, you need to be an organization admin to request this. If you aren't, then just go ask your organization admin to do it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>